Yeah. And it didn't. Once and you're done. <laughs> <laughs> In terms of the, 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 the matchup, I do want to comment on what Necro was saying. The manager was like, well, we've scouted it, you know, Gaming Gear. They've only got one strat. I find it kind of funny because we've seen a similar play style from Payne, this very uh -huh. heavy. And we'll see if they're going to pull it off again in this matchup. Once again, Israel being taken out the pool. Well, I think that Dark Passage really need to work on their positioning because they actually had bad positioning in laning phase and in, in the mid game around the dragon fights and then even in the late game as well. So Payne is like, they're the team that will punish you the most for stepping out of line. If you step out of line once, they're going to hit you with an Orianna ult, the Shockwave, the Crescendo. Then they're going to hit you with an Unstoppable Force. And then they're going to hit you again with Zack and bounce all over your face and then you're just bloody on the floor. So you have to worry about your positioning at all phases of the game here. I got a little nervous there for a second. You're getting a bit aggressive there, Kobe. In terms of the picks and bans, insta lock on the Zack for Pain Gaming. It worked so well for Surti in the previous game. Malphite is still up. One of the things that Jat was highlighting in his post game analysis of game one was like ban Malphite, take Zack. But when you're not first pick, it's way more difficult to try and pull that off. Yeah, so Pain again with the Zack. That's really the main point that they use to set up most of their combos with. So tagging Orianna onto that one, they can always uh, pull off that amazing shockwave combo. And then they also still have Malphite up. So pretty much the same things that they used last game, they can still use today. So it's interesting to see in this particular match now, Payne, they had basically every champion from the previous game available to them. They've modified it a little bit in that they've got the, the vein instead of the Twitch. Maybe just experimenting, getting some practice on the stage in <laughs> preparation for, you know, finals or something like that? Hey, they need to win this game, yes. If they lose, then they'll have one more chance. But I don't feel like it's uh, Sir T or uh, BRTT just getting bored on Twitch and saying, oh, I want to try my hand at Bane now. Well, we'll have to see how it works out for them. Um, do you see that uh, Dark Passage have locked in? Gragas and Caitlyn as their next two picks. Now, we've seen some very good Gragas play from uh, Gaming Gear's mid laner, Mazarin. And yeah. I was particularly impressed. He got Baron Steals, he was bursting people down. It is a powerful champion when it used in the right hands. And it's an interesting choice against the Pain team that likes to go with the, the huge CC combos and group up. If Dark Passage can split that team apart and pick somebody off, that may be the answer that they're looking for. Right now, you know, Gragas, you can use that all defensively, but if Zack's able to get in there already, then that means the Orianna ball is by your team. And you'll have to be very, very quick if you're going to be able to knock him back out. Well, we'll have to see how quick his reaction times are in this particular match. Because that ball delivery system of Jarvan and Zack is there. Not exactly the Malphite Zack, but uh, Jarvan arguably even better than Malphite. Not only can he yeah. knock you up, he'll lock you in. And he can come from a longer distance because he can combo the EQ into the ult, the Cataclysm. And if he does have the Oriana Ball with him, then he's coming with Shockwave loaded. So there's two systems here. And if it's a spread out team fight, that actually benefits Bane more because she chases down straggling targets. Well, we'll have to see how this works out because there is a lot of mobility on the side of Dark Passage for the time being. Lee Sin should be able to hop out. Gragas can okay. belly slam through. I mean, everybody in Dark Passage has the ability with their uh, skills just to get out of a cataclysm. However, if they're all knocked up and bounced and shockwaved, it's going to be scary. So another situation where Dark Passage can't afford to group Yeah. Up. Well, with that last pick, you can tell what Dark Passage are thinking. They want the counter to this pain team be, uh, to be splitting the team up and then allowing the Kazakhs to single, uh, single out whoever gets knocked closest to their team. They can burst that one down and start getting the chain hops there from a level 11 plus Kazakhs. Then that could be the answer in the late game. The interesting thing about that is they've got to make it to level 11 without falling yeah. too far behind, which to be fair, uh, it's a little overly harsh, but they fell further and further and further behind the longer that laning phase went on. And there's going to be a lot of pressure now on those solo laners of Dark Passage to not get caught out and not be jumped on by, by Riosto. Or At least they're putting the pressure back on Pain to also watch their uh, position and their ability to group up because if they stay up closer to S5, then that's what Gragas is going to be looking for to get his combo off and single out somebody for Kazakhs to jump on. Well, we'll have to see how this plays out. This is potentially the grand final placement match here for Pain Gaming. They are 1-0 up against Turkey's Dark Passage. And of course, they're, they're feeling confident. They've beaten them two out of two games they in should the group be. stage. They just beat them very convincingly in the very first matchup. We're jumping into uh, this now potentially deciding game.
but Dark Passage Ray is something we haven't seen from him. This is a composition that we haven't seen from actually any of the wildcard teams all weekend. And that unknown factor always plays a role, you know, if yeah. you're not 100% sure how to play against them. They're not quite going to the extent of a, uh, a AD Lulu mid and uh, <laughs> bringing out the Tr Trindamir solo split pushing all game long, but I feel like this is a pretty good answer that they've come up with. I think the Australians letting the blood rush to their heads once the gravity was the right <laughs> way up. Once the gravity was the right way up. Now, however, we are into the matchup. Pain Gaming, remember, they were the highest seed. They decided to pick red side for the first game, which means they are now blue side in the second game. And Dark Passage, they're wearing the red trunks. We'll see how this early game goes, because previously, Pain were actually very aggressive. We've seen a, an early slingshot out of their jungler in the previous matchup. Yeah, it doesn't look like they'll be doing that again here, but... We saw in the video, some of the pain guys are saying, this crowd is not as loud as the Brazilian crowds. And it looks like we have plenty of people here. I don't know why everyone's so quiet. I guess we don't have very many pain I'm, fans. I'm not sure. I wonder if we can get three cheers Whoa. to send the Brazilians a message. So on three, guys, let's go. Who are? One, two, three. <laughs> That, you know what, they're right. The Brazilians are louder than all of you guys. That's, that's shocking. We'll do this one more try. One, two, three. That's a little better. That's a little better. You need something more like Demacia or League of Legends related at least, Trevor. Wow, we'll, we'll do a Demacia to close out the show. <laughs> you got to work on your chant calls. <laughs> What's happening in this game other than everybody walking around? Well, we had a couple of early wards placed down by Pain, uh, as well as by Dark Passage. So pretty much mirrored vision here for both teams. And this has really been the story in a lot of the competitive games. Everyone favoring to get that red side vision. And then uh, the junglers having to be a little bit wary about their beginnings. Both people are going to start their own reds, though. So it shouldn't come to anything this early in the game. Well, both teams have got very good early game junglers. Jarvan and Lee Sin particularly effective at getting involved and helping to secure, ki secure kills during the laning phase. We'll have to see whether Sir T or Riosta Pick that up, and we are going to see head to head matchups again as the dual laners go top and both of our top laners go bottom. Yeah, BRTT is extremely confident in his laning phase, the two versus two. And Fab Fab's doing great work, yeah. Ren and Razor forced backwards. That's a lot of damage from Taste the Fear on that isolation bonus. He did not pop his red elixir though because he didn't think that he was going to be able to get the kill, and he does back off in time to avoid the support from Jarvan, so it did. Also, waste a little bit of that jungler time, which means that he's relieving a slight amount of pressure on the rest of the lanes. We'll have to see if not having that potion works in his favor as well. They also just pinged out Jarvan, so they're still aware of Jarvan's movements. And Pain seem to be very, very comfortable right now. Even up in that top lane, they know it's going to take Jarvan a few more uh, seconds to be able to finish off with blue and come up there. So they're still playing aggressive here, punishing that vain early game with Caitlyn's long range. Well, we'll have to see if anyone can make this work down the bottom lane. Venon down to There's a red elixir. Does flash and force to use that uh, sing shot to get away, but he does get away safely. That's the important thing. And he did have to use the flash very early there um, because of the aggression here for Fat Fab. Well, that's a double bubble throwing up members of Dark Passage. Now, the RTT is going to try and tumble around and get as much damage down as possible. And at this point in time, the sustain of that Sona is going to outpace the sustain of Nami. It's going to be very close up in that top lane. They, they both have defensive wards, though, and the lane bush is even warded for Dark Passage. Well, we do see the Riosta does get knocked up into the air. That's Sir T with a double buff. That's just going to be able to safeguard away. Now Payne is trying to get in a range here. We do see that. Oh, oh he's now jumped on. The execution not going to be enough. Ignites are traded back and forth. Who's going to pick up the first blood here? It does land for Naru playing Gragas. And the shield from Lee Sin is going to be able to keep Riosta alive. We do see Sir T trading back and forth with Naru. As now all of a sudden, the solo laner of Fab Fab has joined the party and he gets knocked up while flying through the air. That Sir was T escapes. great play by Naru in the mid lane. He came over to allow Lee Sin to escape that and then landed the burst combo onto Orianna. Kami was not expecting that. No, not he does at all. not get first blooded very often. Well, it definitely works in Naru's favor. He does secure the gold for that first blood as well as a little bit of additional time in lane without any other focus. Sir T is hovering around that bush though. And we'll have to see that with Kami returning, 
Red buff has just worn off. The possibility of a reply kill was there, but it didn't work out for them. Now in the top lane, that looks like Ignite has gone down Ooh. onto BRTT. He manages to survive by getting out of range of that pilt of a Peacemaker. But that's a very low HP, Caitlyn. She didn't use her barrier, though. Still has it. So the knockup does get avoided by a very good flash. Lithilion gets out cleanly, down wow. to about 57 HP, but barrier still alive. Lithilion just holds onto that barrier to the very last second. I feel like he's going to be a good baiter, but Ooh. he almost drops it to the flag. Damasian standard drops on his head and drops his HP to 25. And it looks like Surtees, he was thinking about it. He was thinking about throwing out another flag. And Cilion does get away cleanly, and all of a sudden, Riosta's going to try and defend this wave up just a little bit. Now, bad. both junglers have made their appearances top, but because Sir T was the first one up there and they got the aggression out first, we also have a Bane beating a Caitlyn in CS at 5.30. Well, one of the other things that's happening for CS is concerned is Riosta, 19 CS to Sir T's 6. He also has an assist to his name. And, you know, a lot of that could stem from that lost time in the jungle by Sir T trying to save or defend Venom, you know? Works into his favor. Riosta's got the Sonic Wave available. Doesn't manage to land it as BRTT tumbles away. Gets himself out of range and Riosta unfortunately unable to secure a second kill. And we have Kami taking the Wraiths now. So Sir T is not going to catch up anytime soon. He's still level 3 coming out of the jungle. Yeah, Riosta's level 5 at this point in time. Getting closer and closer to that level 6. There's only about a level and a half difference though. And we'll have to see how impactful that actually works out is now the three-man Dark Passage is pushing down this top lane. And this is a significant improvement in their early game as far as the Turkish players are concerned. Yeah, really good showing here from Dark Passage coming out in the second game. They don't want to be kicked out this early. Well, we do see, though, on the minimap, Surti is moving up the river. This could potentially be a 3v3. However, Surti just peels away to the side. Be very careful here as Holy Thoth does not have his crescendo available. Flash was there and wisely, I think, Dark Passage back away after securing that tower. Level 4 pretty far away from getting that crescendo, but it also means nobody else has their ultimates up in that lane and nobody goes to fight. Now it's up to Pain to decide. Would they rather freeze that lane and just last hit so it pushes extremely slowly or continue and shove the lane into the tower so that they can actually answer on the rest of the map. Well, as it stands, Dark Passage, you've got a three-man stack in the mid lane facing off against the three-man of Pain. However, it's a support for an AD carry that's holding this lane. You can see that the RTT is split pushing, or at least containing the CS that is pushing towards him. The best he can to last hit. And Pretty close so far. So BRTT is not freezing that lane. It's just that he's Bane with no area of effect damage, so it takes him a while to push it back. You know, Venon and Fab Fab trading ultimates and damage. They ignite for barrier. A lot of damage going back and forth, but almost in unison. Both champions are like, well, we can't kill each other just yet. And they actually stop fighting. Nice ultimates, though, by both of them. <laughs> they just decided to trade blows. Uh, we do have the... So Bane is one of the AD carries that's weakest at split pushing until she gets something like a static shiv. So it's taken him this long to get the minion wave back up to Dark Passage turret, which actually meant that Caitlyn had a lot of time to be able to uh, make her presence felt in that mid lane and then get back up top before the wave's at her turret so she doesn't miss out on much of that CS. Well, you do see that Fab Fab jumps on top of Bennett, gets that leap, throws out the void spikes, and He's continually trying to poke him down, really. It does look like his taste of fear was leveled up. Riosta does not manage to catch that sonic wave onto Zack, so unable to do any of those kickbacks that we've seen numerous times throughout the weekend. So Venon still has Soul Division up, too, so the revive passive is available. An extended turret dive would be a poor decision, and they decide to pull back as they see Jarvan. Yeah, we've seen a lot of tower dives on Zack over the course of this wildcard tournament, and Needs to work out a little cautiously. Fab Fab being forced back with that red buff really hitting particularly hard. So T probably got the same amount of HP as both of his Ooh. opponents. Tower hits are going to drop Rios to about 200 HP and he's forced to run backwards. A little bit too much damage from underneath that tower. And the mid laners are actually mirroring each other, both of them thinking of roaming down bottom. Kragas can actually uh, get there very quick. Both of these mid laners like to AOE down the minion wave. Oh, here we go, in on Orianna. Oh, we do see that throw Kami back with Shockwave goes down, catches a super minion as well. Kami's now going to get another barrel to his face, and actually Kami comes off lesser in that trade. Yeah, because there's a blue buff um, on Naru right now, he does not care about that cooldown. And it's similar to what we just saw down in the bottom lane, where both of the solo laners 
using everything at their disposal. And Daru was the one init to initiate that because he had the blue buff already, and he'll have the shorter cooldown. So I'm taking a look at the CS now that that wave is pushing back towards Pain Gaming as far as Pain are concerned. And you can see that Letalion is even on CS with BRTG Pain. The big difference here is those giant, uh, the top laners. Fab Fab 75 to the 45 of Venom. Another lane where Venom falls behind in CS. Fab Fab's come out very strong since that early one where he went behind the turret and started to uh, use, make use of his isolation damage on Zac. But he's also had repeat ganks from Lee Sin here. So it hasn't been all Fab Fab. Well, Dark Passage with a numbers advantage, vision advantage, secure the first dragon of the game shortly before 10 minutes and 15 seconds. They extend their gold lead to 3,000 right now. That's the side benefit there of the matchup you were just talking about where Fab Fab's basically running Venon out of lane. Because they're actually bottom instead of top right now, they get control of Dragon and just that one pink ward is enough to secure them another global objective. So Dark Passage looking so much better this game. And Nari's cheeky enough to steal away the Wraith Camp, gets thrown up into the bubble. He did use his Ignite there on Sir T, and I imagine if he wasn't stunned by that bubble, he may have been able to get a full combo off and look for a kill, but Ignite is now burned and that burst potential slightly reduced. Yeah, very timely Aqua Prison right there, saving Jarvan, regardless of the fact that it was Naru versus three members of Pain Gaming in the area. And we do see if Naru manages to throw Kami backwards. Body slam does land. Can I have his barrel up in just a moment or two as here comes Espeon. Maybe able to get the heal out and it's going to keep Kami alive for the time being. But Kami, even though he's being bullied and pushed around, he's not losing out on CS. Naru is doing his best to clear the waves and get as much harass down on Kami as possible so that he can send him back to, to base so that he will miss out on that CS. But Kami has been taking those rates, like we said earlier, too. So every time he comes back to lane, he catches up even quicker. Well, we do see that Naru and Rios are trying to put some damage in their mid lane tower. Unfortunately, it doesn't pay off for them as they force backwards. Centillion and Holy Thoth now warding up the blue buff side of Pain Gaming as they are fairly overextended right now. Not a lot of vision in the river, so they've got to be very cautious with how they play, and I think they realize that, hence the retreat, hence the backing off at this point in time. Dark Passes, it's a good job, though. What, that's exactly what you want to do when you have the mid-game global gold lead that they've gotten from the early turrets and the early dragon. So they just need to keep up the pressure, and to do that, you have to ward deeply. So it's a good follow-up, but they actually have to capitalize on it with plays because they're winning all of their lanes right now, and they have to get more out of it. Well, the blue buff on side of Pain Gaming should be respawning in the not too distant future. We might see Dark Passage trying to make a play for it. You can see Holy Thoth with his flash available, poising himself towards this mid lane, once again returning out, and here comes the Tinion with that pickaxe and Vamp Scepter. So maybe the tower, maybe blue buff, we'll have to see as there is a fair number of, uh, a fair number of Dark Passage members around this area of the map. It looks like Naru's going a bit deeper here, and he wants to exert some jungle pressure all by himself. They're able to at least scare Sir T away, but that red buff is still alive. It's actually chasing Naru, taking him for a walk. Tower is still standing in the mid lane. Espeon unable to land that Aqua Prison. You can see Naru coming from behind. And again, Vayne without the wave clear up top for a long period of time means that Caitlyn can make her presence felt mid, and it's slowly chipping away at this mid turret. Oh, knockout not managing to land as Naru just body slams to safety. Gets himself just out of sight as Fab Fab has now been left unattended. He's extended that gold, that uh, creep lead even further. He's got a lot of damage down onto this tower. Unfortunately, he's run out of minions, so he is forced to back off at least for a brief moment or two. I love how Dark Passage are all on the same page here. They're playing every single lane as aggressively as they can. Daru in mid, every time he's got his ulti ready, he's using it for harass just to force Kami back to base. Fab Fabulous is doing the same thing. Every time he can get close to Venon, he's going for trades. And because of that, they're slowly getting the tower damage advantage, both in mid and bottom. Meanwhile, Caitlyn's already made quick work of her turret. Yeah, take a look at the mid lane. Flash Crescendo comes out instantly flashed away from Pain Gaming. That's a flash and the Crescendo blown. But they did get the tower, so traded summoner spells and ultimates. At the end of the day, Dark Passage advantage. Yeah, very quick reflexes over there. Pain Gaming 
on the ball. They haven't lost it quite yet, but that's going to be the second turret going down. They just got the mid one, and Fat Fab wants to finish this one off. Oh, we do see Let's Bounce coming out from Venom. He's throwing Fat Fab around. Fat Fab is going to stealth up. Ignite is ticking. He now turns back onto Venom. Hex oh, Drinker no. has been popped, but here comes Jarvan. The knockup throws the bug into the air. We'll see if they've got a fly swatter down. Shield comes up from Rios to save God. Now the barrier has been burned. First kill of the fight. That is going to be Fab Fab going down as Riosta and Naru now have the health and the damage advantage. Barrel goes down and Surti actually flashes away. He may try to get a double knockup if he goes backwards, decides against it. it. Was out of mana as well, so may not have been able to cast him a one great, for two trade. Great roam there from Naru. He had forced Kami back earlier, so he was the only mid laner with the time available to rotate down, and he was able to back up Fat Fat. Even though he had overextended a little bit because he wanted to finish off that turret, one for one trade, they'll take that one. Yeah, definitely going to work out in their favor. We do see that Naru is falling a little bit behind those creeps, but he's decided to pick up that Morella Nomicon as his very first item. That's got a lot of uh, benefits against the lifesteal, the healing, and very importantly on Zach's passive as well. All that reduced healing once they get him lower just makes his burst combo even more difficult to deal with. It's very surprising as well if you're not used to playing against that Dragos combo. Rushing a Morella Nomicon means that he gets cooldown reduction on it as well, which plays into the strategy that he's been running mid lane, which is basically throw everything he has on cooldown to force Kami back to base as often as possible. If available, throw barrel is the basic strategy that we've been seeing. It's, it's working out for the time being. I do like how, you know, Dark Passage, after losing that game, they've turned the aggression up to 10 here. Everybody is just going all out in every single lane. The nice thing is they haven't been caught out of position, really. All the time, they have been playing very deep and have been playing on Pain Gaming side of the map. It's always been calculated. You can see now with the numbers advantage and with the fact that they've got a, a pretty significant lead, they're going to be able to pick up an uncontested dragon here. I believe they're first of the game. All of that minion wave shoving into turrets has afforded them so much map pressure that they can take dragon on cooldown at this point. And Naru looks to catch out. We do see Espeon has been caught out. The barrel's not going to be enough to close him. We do see a Condemn, though. Throws the Tillion backwards as here comes Zach. Let's bounce all over the place. The Knight of Calibanet throws it in on a little bit to safety. Fab Fab uh, exhausted underneath the turret. The first victim to fall is, in fact, going to be Holy Thorn on Sona. They've traded support for support, but now Naru is way overextended. The rest of his team has bailed. They've booked it out of there. And all of a sudden, Pain Gaming with a very good win in this team fight. It's not over yet. As Fab Fab tries to jump in and fight targets. Riosta is going to have a ward to put down and jumps over the wall. It was in fact Dark Passage's second Dragon, so thanks to the global goal, they still maintain that 5,000 advantage. Yeah, really good that they took Dragon before going for that turret dive, because Pain were looking for that one. Now they'll at least have the respawn timer, but it was really just Dark Passage thinking they had caught out uh, Nami there and oversending a little bit. Tower dive is not the thing that they want to do at this point. Yeah, really good reactions from Venno when you know uh, coming in, they're disrupting everybody of Dark Passage and really helping Pain Gaming at the very least secure that team fight and their first tower of the game. So if they are able to continue this focus on other lanes, they can bring the goal back. Well, Dark Passage don't really have a tower diving comp here. There's nobody that's going to build a huge amount of armor to soak up that damage. Lee Sin is, is a long ways off from being able to be that uh, initiator with his safeguard in and looking to kick somebody back. So they don't really have any business fighting around turrets. They'd much rather have those open areas where they can make use of the Gragas combo. Oh my goodness, he gets caught. Yeah, and I tell you, it's going to get taken down. BRTT with a brilliant stun there. Just condemns, condemns against the wall, and it's difficult to duel vain. <laughs> I think we'll leave it at that. <laughs> I love the golf claps coming out from the crowd. Yes, yes, well played, BRTT. <laughs> nice duel there. So the one thing that we are seeing from Dark Passage, even though they don't have your traditional tank when it comes to tower dives, they've got the ability to get you away from the tower. <laughs> Lee Sin Kick, Gragas Barrel is like, well, you stay at the tower, we just want that dude. We'll see if they can pull it oh, off. Oh, they're going on Kami, there goes another turret dive. And I do manage to jump on it, the Dragon's Rage Kick was used, unfortunately didn't go the right way now. Riosta gets knocked up in the air, Holy Thoth forced back, because there's no crescendo available. Now that Holy Thoth is caught in, he's the first victim, and that safeguard from Riosta to the ward gets him out cleanly. Now Fab Fab, there's nobody in execution range, condemned so close to pinning him to the tree line. Not going to work out, and Pain Gaming have now turned the aggression to 11 as they force Dark Passage backwards. Well, another turret dive by Dark Passage and another failed trade right here. Kaelin was not even with the team. Now the minion wave has been taken out thanks to that very good wave clear of Dark Passage. 
but it does mean Payne are unable to continue that siege. And they actually yeah. got a, they've got a pretty weak siege team as well. Payne is very short range. Melee Zack, Melee Jarvan is risky getting in, in range of those towers, especially against the Lee Sin and the Gragas. I feel like the outer turrets here are going to stay standing for quite a, a bit of time on Dark Passage side. Well, the defense definitely has been pretty good so far, and the fact that Fab Fab's picked up those boots of mobility, he should be able to respond very, very quickly to any oh, focus. Oh, Naru has a good position here on BRTT. Uh, there was no explosive cask available, unfortunately. So, uh, he also doesn't have the same ward coverage on the red side jungle here as he does up on the blue side jungle. If he had known that there was nobody else from Pain in the area, he could have gone all in for that. But without the vision, it's too chancy at this point. Just decide to back away. Pain Gaming have effectively stalled the, the focus of Dark Passage after the last eight or so minutes. They haven't lost more objectives. They've actually taken more kills than they've given up. And they're finding a way to claw back this gold game. 5,000 gold at 12 minutes is significantly less I impactful than 5,000 gold later in the matchup. And Pain this Gaming are doing good to stall. Yeah, this is a new face that we haven't seen from Pain Gaming because they haven't been so far behind in the early game. How will they deal with stalling it out until they can get even on gold again? Well, they've yet to... They've yet to really be caught out, and, and I think they've taken advantage of Dark Passage's mistakes on those dives more than they've really created the opportunities themselves. And it was a mistake at Dark Passage in the previous game. They didn't make plays. They didn't find doors to open and windows to jump through. So we'll have to see if Pain are able to uh, avoid that stumbling block. Pain are also using a lot of pink wards to ward up their own jungle. So not only do they have vision of the movements of Dark Passage, but they can actually clear out the wards from Dark Passage so that they can sort of stop the bleeding and retain control of their own jungle at least, even though they are that 3k, almost 4k gold behind. Yeah, that red, uh, <laughs> that sidestone there really saving Riosta's life. He was able to get away cleanly. A couple of times actually he's gone incredibly, incredibly low in his team fights and used the mobility of Lee Sin just to get himself out. As it stands, Pain Game are going to secure their blue buff. Dark Passage were looking to challenge, but there wasn't enough members to actually pick a fight there. Dark Passage don't look quite focused at this stage of the game. They should have control of Pain's side of the jungle, but we just talked about Pain successfully defending both of their buffs there. They got the blue and the red where they wanted them. Dark Passage are not taking as many objectives as they did in the early game. Well, we're definitely going to have to see how and when Pain decide to pick this fight. They've dropped that gold lead now to about 3,000 odd gold. Vayne hitting that 2,200 CS mark is about to get close enough to finish off that Phantom Dancer, not too far away. And with the Blade of the Rune King and the Phantom Dancer, you've got to feel that that's really a, a power spike that BRTC and the rest of Pain would want to take advantage of. Admittedly, they are dealing with an Infinity Oh, there's the jump! Kami, that's so much damage going down, but they haven't been able to close out the kill. Shockwave pulls Riosa backwards, but there's no one else from Pain just yet. The Explosive Cast throws Kami into the wall. They picked up the first kill. That's a jungler down for a mid lane, and now all of a sudden, Fab Fab finds himself surrounded by members of Pain Gaming. That is going to be a dead bug. Crescendo locks up members of Pain Gaming, and the Hex Drinker saves Dark Passages Fab Fab. He manages to get away. They trade one for one, but Pain Gaming were basically 2v4, 2v5 for most of that engagement. Fab Fab gets out alive after that one so close. The early Hex Drinker definitely paying off, but also Venon got out with just as low life. It wasn't quite as tense for him because he's got Cell Division, but equally long cooldown right there. Well, the one thing that we do see from Fab Fab is his flash and his barrier have now been uh, used up. And that's another, I don't want to use the word dive, but that's another fight that Dark Passage have started that hasn't really gone the way that they had intended. Uh, exactly. Another trade, another even trade here for Pain. The only thing that goes in Dark Pass's favor is that, hey, they got the dragon right before that. So they've done a good job of, a, of continually taking all the dragons in this game, and that's why they're stretching their gold lead. So they've had a really, really good start for Dark Passage in this second game, coming out with an answer to Pain, which nobody else has had. But they have to keep up with this game plan and finish it off. It's all about the late game now.
And it's something that Dark Passage have actually done. Uh, every every dragon for the last three, they get dragon, they pick a fight, and it does tend to backfire. So we may be in for another couple minutes before any action is committed to, at least from a Dark Passage point of view. Since they've got those three outer towers, they've not been confident enough to push the inner towers just yet, even with that immense range of Caitlyn. They're playing it very, very safely. And Caitlyn with an Infinity Edge is a, is a huge item for her, so they're actually going to have a lot more power from the back line, which they did not have before. And we also have a very good spike on Naru right now because he's got a Death Cap on top of his Morella Namacon and technically a six item build <laughs> because he's got two more <laughs> rings than a Crystal Flash. I think that's not quite the way it's intended, <laughs> Kobe, but I cannot discount that then. There's multiple players in Six Lights and Bolts right now. We'll have to see how well Dark Passage can respond. We did see Venon thinking about a fight there. He landed himself squarely on top of Riosa, but decided against it, just backed away, opted not to use that left bounce. And, you know, truthfully, playing gaming, they haven't necessarily stacked up unless they're defending a tower. This may be the first Ooh. time Insta Flash from Nori. And it's because Kane know that they're just going to wait. Oh my god. Surti just gets shredded. He's thinking about picking a fight and Dark Passage managed to pick up a kill onto Surti's job. And now we do see BRTT force backwards. Ignite is going to be enough to pick up the kill. Bad 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 manages to stay alive. He's life stealing off the blobs. Is going to be able to do so as Riosta flashes forward. Dragon's Rage kick and that is an ace for Dark Passage. In an instant, they pick up five kills and Dark Passage are looking to take towers. Bab Bab always seems to get out right there and I don't know why Payne went aggressive. They actually had a free flash there by Jarvan going in onto Naru, but then it compromised Jarvan's position and he could not get back, costing them an ace. Well, did you see Fab Fab recalling? The death time is also fairly low and Dark Passage is going to be able to pick up the second tower. 13 seconds on Kami and they wisely back away. Low mana pools and lower HP pools means it was a risky play, but they extend that gold lead further and with an exposed inhibitor, that might be the welcoming that Dark Passage are looking for. They just breathed a huge sigh of relief. They already had the lead, but they were struggling to capitalize, and now that they don't have to deal with the turret, they don't have to make one of those very risky turret dives that they've failed over and over again. They could just go to the exposed inhibitor, which is also the perfect inhibitor for them to go for because it's at the bottom of the map. And once that's down, then they can force Pain to come at them through the Baron pit and force them to fight outside of the turrets. The impact that Fab Fab had in that previous team fight cannot be discounted. He was a large part of that burst onto Sir T that basically forced Sir T into the Cataclysm. So he said, well, I'm going to die. I'll try and lock you in for as long as I can and just backfire a little bit. Dark Passage moving themselves actually towards the Baron side of the map now with a large amount of vision. I wonder if they're considering it or if maybe they're just playing that bait card. So they're trying to preemptively clear out the wards around the Baron. If I was them, I would definitely like to return to that bottom lane as soon as possible, though, and get another fight going with oh. Pain in the in the uh, the open battlefield. Well, as it stands, all five members of Dark Passage are basically head to head with all five members of Pain Gaming. The minion Wave is slowly making its little conga line up. And the inner top lane tower is the target of Dark Passage. That's an Infinity Edge Static Shift Cape, and she's clearing waves very quickly. This is very dangerous for Dark Passage, though. Venom's gonna jump himself in, Slingshot comes out, Cataclysm goes down, Surtees on the front line, Venom still not use that uh, Let's Bounce Crescendo, is available, doesn't manage to lock up any damage to Lisa's Venom. He's gonna be the first victim of the team fight, and Pain Gaming completely scattered in that one. Looks like they don't have as many engages as they're used to. Both Jarvan and Zack with the semi uh, going in and nobody's there with them. So they take a lot of damage and then have to use everything to get back out of the fight. Dark Passage are taking this one deep. Take a look for the Sonic Wave. Ryosh is going to fly himself forward. Fab Fab gets a first kill. He's got the resets available. Decides not to jump in. But with that Sonic Wave sitting on Kami, the threat of Resonating Strike forces him backwards. We do see that. So uh, BRTT is now trying to defend this inhibitor turret. However, that's five members of Dark Passage. Sonic Wave lands, command attack goes over, defend goes in. A very good stun onto Fab Fab. Throws him against the wall. That's going to prevent him dealing some damage as BRTT tumbles into an inhibitor. Barrier is up. The Silver Bolt is going to be enough to give BRTT a double kill. And they successfully defend the inhibitor. 
very close right there. And Dark Passage, if they had been at the bottom area, then that would have been the inhibitor down. However, they got that one turret, so there's only one turret standing outside the base of Pain that's left standing. Well, we'll have to see how well Dark Passage can close this out. Condemned so close to throwing Naru into the wall. Phantom Dancer and that Blade of the Rear King for BRTT. We talked about how it's a nice power spike, but he hasn't really had a chance to pick a fight. Now we do see him chasing forward, and Naru's just going to body slam through the tree line and get out cleanly. Pain may really be missing that Malphite right now because that's really a, a guaranteed engage with the Unstoppable Force, whereas with the Jarvan, he's going in, and you can get to the targets, but if there's not a Shockwave primed and ready to go off, then he takes a lot of damage going in for that category. And of course, in terms of the champion selections, Pain Gaming could have picked that Melfight. It was available to them, was neither banned nor taken away by Dark Passage. However, Pain Gaming, thanks to a little bit of the team fight control and, and some breathing room, they're able to pick up their first dragon of the game. The question is now, can they hold? The question is, can they defend? There's no super minions, so that definitely helps them out a lot. However, that exposed you know, inhibitor, it maybe should be what Dark Passage are looking for. It's either that or go back to the Baron, because they did just spend a bunch of pink wards on the Baron area, and they should be aware that it's still ward free for them. They can try and sneak one very quickly, since Kazix has so much damage right now, and Baron is always isolated, then he'll get the bonus. Well, we'll have to see. Now they decide to play this one, they've actually Got themselves a little split right now. There's a very, very big minion wave in this bottom lane. You can see that both Naru and Fab Fab, they're thinking about whoever's going to farm this up. That's who they want to jump on top of, but uh -oh. they find themselves very overextended. Here comes five members of Pain Gaming. Both Fab Fab and Naru do have dashes, but if the entire team comes down, then they would also be able to get the Baron. This is a very interesting predicament that Pain are in if they decide to go after the duo push or the three-man Baron squad. Well, this looks like a 3v3 as you do see Venom. He throws himself in, let's bounce his up. Cataclysm is available if Sir T wants to use it. He manages to get kicked away by uh, uh, the, the Lee Sin. Very good Dragon's Rage and that's going to be enough of a counter. Tidal Wave got throws out by Espeon, but it's not going to be enough to land on anybody. Now the 2v2, mid laner and top laner versus mid laner and AD carry. A lot of damage from those barrels on Kami. He's got to be careful if Fab Fab jumps on him. They also have to be careful of home guards going that deep into Payne's base. At this point, Payne should all be buying up home guards if they can. First one to do it is Venon. Well, we'll have to see how effectively it works out for them. BRT is trying to move forward as Fab Fab has been able to catch out Sir T. Taste the fears going down, but that isolation bonus is about to wear out. There's no left bounce available. Fab Fab jumps back in. He gets the first kill. Jumps back out thanks to the reset. And that's a very good kick. Fab Fab with that more Mamortius, a lot of armor penetration. He's starting to get towards that Black Cleaver. He is already terrifying before that's completed. Fab Fab making a really good showing in this game right here. Even with the five members of Pain coming to defend bottom, he finds the time to go back in for the kill, relying on the reset to get his jump and escape. Well, the really nice thing about that is just confidence in the damage you're dealing. And now that Dark Passage, you've got a numbers advantage, and crucially, the jungler is down. They've actually started off this Baron. Naru is running very good interference in that mid lane, holding at least the top laner, Vizzy Venom. No hint of it. There was no poison from Pain Gaming to even move towards Baron. That's because they haven't been able to get a ward over by Baron for the last five minutes. Dark Passage have done a very, very good job of keeping that area clean. And now they can finally return to the exposed inhibitors. This time with Baron buff. So when Pain decide to go for that engage, they'll actually have a giant upper hand. In well, I feel like every time we've talked about the bottom lane, Dark Passage <laughs> said, nope, you're hey, they wrong. just pinged it, okay? Okay, right, well, now, now we'll see. Now, yeah. we, now we're confident. Now we're confident this one. There are some, some Turkish pings down on that bottom inhibitor. Dark Passage trying to even up the series against Brazil's Pain. They are 0-1 down, and they're in. This is basically their game to lose. I mean, they've got Baron, they've got a 10k gold lead, they've got a massive tower advantage. As long as they don't mess up the tower dives, they should be okay. And we'll see how well they pick these next two fights. And if they do lose this game, then they're out. So they definitely have to play this extremely carefully right now. Taking just the bottom inhibitor and then returning to slow push another lane and take their time. Because they definitely have this, the advantage with both a Sona and a Baron, uh, Baron buff on your team. You have incredible regen. 
and you have a very strong siege potential. Well, we can see Naru is heading himself through the jungle. Now down towards this bottom lane, they're still a little bit split up. Come on, attack and distance is going to hit fairly hard. It's not really going to dissuade him as that Baron and the healing will now start to take effect. There's no tower to sit underneath, so Pain Gaming starts to feel the pressure. Here comes Ben and Slingshot goes out, doesn't catch anybody. Trey's Revery was enough. Now we do see a very good Condemn onto Fab Fab against the wall. He's trying to find a kill onto Surti, but Surti manages to get away. A good tidal wave is going to buy some time and some, you know, uh, confusion as far as Dark Passage is concerned. The Ace of the Hole is going to fly out, not going to be enough to pop Cell Division. Riosta's looking for the kill on BRTT, but he's forced to flash away to safety. Nathilion's immense range is going to keep BRTT's vein under control and locked down. Pick up a single kill and pick up the inhibitor. Dark Passage back away. The target's going to be mid lane. Again, Naru right here with the Kragas, the champion of Turkey right now, knocking Nami back into the team. So they did end up with one kill at least, and they got the inhibitor, both the objective and the kill. Very good win for Dark Passage. And one, you know, BRTT and Pain Gaming were just unable to kill or fab fab, even with that condemn. Uh oh. Throw themselves in. There's the slingshot again. They've caught Holy Thought. There's no crescendo available, but here comes Riasta and Naru. Now, Dark Passage are all over the place as they slowly started to rejoin this fight. BRTT picks up the first kill. That is onto Holy Thought Sona. The Banshee's Veil has been popped, so let's see if BRTT can get away. Sonic Wave catches a minion, and Riasta is actually going to close that off. Condemn throws him over the wall. Thanks to a good safeguard. The rest of Todd's passage said, bro, what are you doing? We want the tower. So well, got he was buying that. time for his team to get a lone uh, damage on that turret, and they're able to grab another objective. More global gold for the team, and they could return with the end of this Baron buff to go purchase their items for the last push. Well, we'll have to see where they decide for that to come down. Most likely going to be that top lane. We've already seen them putting some auto attacks down onto that inhibitor turret. But as it stands, League of Legends by the numbers, take every tower, take every objective, and then push for the Nexus. Dark Passage, they've maintained this. They've maintained a gold lead for the majority of this game, if not all of it. I think they have all of it. Because of what they're doing right here, it's time for the dragons. Again, they're going to clean up yet another dragon. Now the game has changed for Dark Passage, too, because with the constant pressure down bottom, because of the inhibitor being down, their team is a, is a really strong disengaged team for Caitlyn. Caitlyn's got the range to just get a couple hits onto a turret and then back up a little bit. They can rely on the crescendo as their counter initiate, and then Gragas to ultimate a single person back, and they can get that isolation damage that Fab Fab's really going to enjoy at this point with all the armor penetration that he's accumulated. Well, let's see whether or not they can pull that one off. They have started to group up towards that top half of the, uh, uh, of the map. A couple of members of Dark Passage just making their way out of the base. Blue buff being secured for Naru. As if his mana regen and cooldown reduction was not enough. He's got that blue elixir glowing away. It's obviously going to help him out. He's, he's now getting closer to the six item build, I believe, Kobe. Zonia's Hourglass is going to be his next point of call. And, you know, he's had a, a very good game. Interestingly enough, Holy Thoth has not put a single point into his Song of Celerity, his uh, E spell. Maxing out his Q and his W for the sustain and the damage. And I guess, you know, if you rush a Shirei's Reverie, you don't need that speed rush quite as, as urgently. They would much rather have the max damage aura and resistance aura for this uh, siege that they're about to pull off, because without a Baron buff, they will need a bit more of the health regen. Gragas, though, with his blue buff, is going to be able to have very strong range harass, and they can buy the time for Caitlyn to get off straight auto attacks onto the turret fairly easily with the zoning potential of the Gragas Barrel. Well, we'll have to see how well Pain Gaming can defend this one. For the time being, Dark Passage are actually playing around in the, the, the space between the wall and the jungle. Instead of trying to get in through the lane, they've taken some poke from Kami's Oriana. Not really too much. Now we do see Vixelion, he's just face tanking that tower, goes man mode and says, this is what I want. Tower's down to 50% HP. And Dark Passage, not entirely committed to this tower push. The Ace in the Hole gets used. That's a lot of damage onto Kami. That's good. They don't want to fully commit. They're forcing Pain to come at them. And we do see the Cataclysm is down. Surti and Venom doing the best they can. Crescendo's going to lock up the back line of Pain Gaming. His Dark Passage pick up one, pick up two. Fab Fab's trying to find more kills as he gets bubbled in the air. That is a triple kill. He's looking for number four. Cell Division is going to be available. That's the quadra kill. Are we on for the pentakill? The blobs are there. Fab, Fab, are they going to time it? This may be the second pentakill as Fab Fab's looking for it. Pentakill! For 
Fab Fabs Kha'Zix, and in what style? Controlled, calculated, and completely brilliant. Fab Fabs definitely deserving of the MVP this time around. Great job by them, and great job by Dark Passage coming back and taking this to a Game 3. So they're gonna take it to the deciding game, and nobody would have expected a performance like this after seeing the group stage games, after seeing the domination in Game 1. Dark Passage with a massive, massive confidence boost. Second, wow. second pentakill of Gamescom. I feel like they really needed that pentakill at the end of the game too because of how strongly they got beat the first game. They have to get fired up now. And that's something that no matter what level you play League of Legends at, when you get a pentakill, you just you feel the power rushing through you. You get excited. I'm particularly impressed with his teammates not nicking that away from underneath him. With, <laughs> with Zach Blobs, the temptation is immensely great. Are you that players. guy? On I can't. If, if they're my friends, if I was playing with you, Kobe, I'd be that guy. <laughs> but a great game by Dark Passage. We're going to go into the game three, the deciding game between Dark Passage and Pain. And remember, the loser goes back home. The loser takes top four in the international wildcard event, but that's it. The winner gets to challenge Lithuania tomorrow in the Grand Finals. And Paint just talked about how confident they were too. Now after this game, they have a lot to discuss because they're going to have to cover up those weak points. This is not even the finals. They still have another best of three after getting 